are you? Who are you? Who am I? What? Amnesia? Amnesia. You know, there's a term for people who can't remember things, specific things like who they are or who others around them are. They, they can't identify them. There's no frame of reference, even though there should be. Amnesia. Can you imagine the frustration of not knowing who you are and the difficulty in seeing those around you and not knowing who they are? Amnesia is horrible because you feel displaced. You know that you are. You just don't know who you are. You simply exist. What would you do if you had amnesia? What would happen to your goals and your dreams? What would happen to your life as it currently is? If you suddenly had no idea who you were, poof. Everything was blackness. Amnesia. It's disconcerting. It's threatening. It's disorienting. But eventually you would get used to it. Eventually you would accept that you don't know who you are and you will begin to accept who others tell you you are. Your identity would be based off of someone else's reality. Amnesia makes you vulnerable to distraction. There's a story, and supposedly it's a true story. There was a movie made about it and articles and things a while back where a lady got amnesia due to a head wound some trauma to her head caused her to lose her memory of who she was and anything about her life. She didn't know her name. She didn't know what she did for a living or where she worked or any of these kinds of things. And there was a man who claimed her as his wife. And not only his wife, but that there were several children that she was the mother of. She didn't remember. She felt no connection. She had no memories, but she became a faithful wife and she became a faithful mother. She helped the husband run his business. Now, there's nothing wrong with running a business. There's nothing wrong with being a spouse and there's definitely nothing wrong with raising children. That's a good thing as a matter of fact. But then years later, her real husband and children found her. You see, it had been a lie. She was tricked. Someone told her she was someone that she was not and she believed it because she had amnesia. She did not know who she was. So she became who she was told that she was supposed to be. You see, if you have amnesia, you don't understand who you are and you definitely won't be able to recognize who others are. What a horrible story, but spiritually a lot of us are walking around with a spiritual amnesia. We do not know who we are. People get frustrated with me because I'm always talking about destiny and that the purpose and the, the, the mission statement of our ministry and our churches are that all people would discover their purpose, live life abundantly and experience their destiny. And some people get frustrated and say, Pastor Mo, I don't know my destiny, I don't know my destiny, and they're upset. Because they say, well, Pastor Mo, tell me who I am. It's not for me to tell you who you are. It's for you to understand whose you are, who you belong to. Your identity in part is based off of your parents. You see, your racial, ethnicity, your cultural background, a lot of the genetics about you have to do with your parents and who you were born to. Also, where you were born determines in part your identity. 
But you see, the Bible says, Jesus says that in order to see the kingdom of heaven, we must be born again. Born directly by the Spirit of God himself. You see, when God becomes your father, not just your creator, because everybody's a creation of God. But the Bible tells us in John that we must be adopted into the sonship of God, that those have the right to become sons who believe in the Son. Once we become sons, then our identity changes. Our identity is different because we are now sons of the creator of the universe. We are now sons of the most high God. We are now sons of the almighty one. And that becomes our identity because of whose we are. We are born again. It's important to understand your identity in Jesus the Christ. Because if you don't understand your identity in Christ, you can never know your destiny. Because you're going to look everywhere you're not supposed to look to discover your purpose. You're going to look everywhere you're not supposed to look to determine the path that you should take. You may look to yourself and come up with your own goals and dreams and concepts. But the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, that God has a specific plan for you. And that his plan for you is a good plan. It's not to hurt you or harm you. It's actually for your benefit. But the key is that it's his plan. And so in order for you to find out his plan for your life, you're going to have to go to him. But if you have amnesia, you don't know whose you are, you don't know who you belong to, then there's a good chance that someone's going to come along and they are going to tell you what you should be doing. They're going to tell you who you're supposed to be. And the odds are it's not the same as who you were born to be, who you were created to be. God has a purpose and a plan for you. God has created you for great things. Only you can do the things that God has for you to do. You were born, you were built a certain way. There's certain things that you are to accomplish. There are certain people that you are supposed to, you're supposed to get involved in their lives and impact their lives, but you have to know who you are in order to do that. Don't put on a policeman's uniform if you're not supposed to be a police officer. That's going to cause more harm than good. Don't put on a nurse's uniform if you're not supposed to be a nurse. That's more harm than good. Do you know your destiny? Do you know where you're supposed to go? Well, sometimes, as James says, we have not simply because we ask not. Maybe you haven't asked God. God, what's my purpose? Why am I here? Maybe. Maybe you've asked him, but you don't really want to know, as James says, double-minded. Maybe in the back of your mind, you're afraid of the answer, and you're not quite sure he's going to tell you something you're going to like. So you ask, but you really don't want to know the answer. When you can get to the point where you're so sick and tired of your amnesia, where the head wound that was inflicted on you at birth, not by your fault, but because of the fault of Adam. But though it's not your fault, it is your responsibility. When you get to the point where you're sick and tired of this spiritual amnesia, and you are ready to receive salvation from the Most High God, then, wow, everything becomes different. I can see clearly now, suddenly I no longer have amnesia. I know who I am and because I know who I am, I know where I should be going. I know what I should be doing. I know how I should behave and I can recognize who you are. I can love God, my heavenly father, and I can love you, my fellow brother and sister, or simply my fellow creation. Amnesia does not have to be permanent. It can be a temporary situation. Jesus wants you to know who you are in him. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to, 
to try and figure out what's going on and be lost. Stop drowning in life. Reach out. Reach up. And ask God to tell you who you are so that you no longer have to have amnesia. You can say, I'm healed. No longer am I bound. No longer will others have to tell me who I am. No longer will I be confused as to which direction I should go. No longer am I going to have to worry if I'm actually loved or not. No longer am I going to have to worry about where I'm going to go when I die. No longer am I going to have to wonder if God could use somebody like me. Because my head wound has healed. He's in fact given me protection, a helmet of salvation. Man, who am I? <laughs> I am a son of the Most High God. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? The sun shines bright as it moves across my face. I feel the light and everything is in its place. Ooh, I woke up feeling great. Today was made for me. Blowing, the bells are ringing.